I'm Rob Kircher and welcome to our 1905 Cottage Restoration. This is a special episode looking back at some of the highlights of what we accomplished during our first year of restoration. And indeed, we had our challenges along the way. Even though some folks thought we were crazy, we remained steadfast in our belief that we could turn this diamond in the rough into an absolute showstopper. You know, where has the time gone? It seems only yesterday that we began to transform this old cottage into an incredible restoration. I'm Rob Kircher and welcome to our 1905 Cottage, an ongoing series of episodes where my wife and I are going to be restoring this baby back to what it was in 1905, that cozy charmer that everyone loves. Well, of course, we're going to be modernizing things along the way, like updating the electrical, adding new plumbing, if you will, uh, restoring the windows, putting insulation in it, all the things that you have to do to an old home. And we love every single second of it. Now behind me is the original shed, which dates back again to 1905. Well, over the years, <laughs> it's had some problems. It's actually sunk into the ground. The floor was completely rotted out. So what we've done up to this point is we've ripped the old floor out. We've jacked it up about a foot and a half. And now we're adding new joists, and soon we're going to have a new floor in it. When I raised this shed several weeks ago to get it out of the mud, I actually jacked it up about a foot and a half and put a whole new floor in. Uh, one of the inherent problems that was uh, uh, very apparent to me is that the windows were too low. This was made for a completely different purpose. It was just a storage shed. This is going to be the future home of my heirloom custom toys. And so I'm going to have workbenches in there that are going to be waist high. So now they are, if I raise all windows to the same height. And I'm going to do that on the other two sides. And then when that's completed, I'm going to scrape it and I'm going to paint it the same color that the new house is going to be painted, which is kind of that interesting blue color with white trim. Dealing with this nasty little problem right here. Uh, this is facing the north side, so Lake Ontario is literally about 300 feet in that direction. And this bears the brunt of a lot of that uh, wind and ice and snow and so on. And as you can see, the sill is completely rotted out. There is nothing left to it. So I've got to get the sill out of here and replace it with a new pressure treated piece of wood. Well, Paul's masterpiece is completed. I absolutely love it. And I asked him, uh, do you have a name for it? And he says, yeah, it's uh, Noah's Ark's Gathering of the Animals, or the Gathering of the Animals from Noah's Ark, however you want to look at it. But I got to tell you something, it is absolutely spectacular. And we're going to get a lot of notoriety from just having it here. And already people are lined up wanting to buy paintings from Paul. So, <laughs> So thank you again, Paul. You did a marvelous job, and uh, we couldn't be more delighted. Well, as we can see, Scott has already pulled the uh, the upstairs toilet out, so that's uh, that's the old one, and in with the new. Scott does not fool around here. It looks like it's seen better days. <laughs> All right, so this is what our bathroom looks like, minus our toilet and our sink. Well, after working very hard, Scott uh, was able to install the beautiful vanity sink and toilet in our upstairs bathroom and it looks absolutely fantastic. The other day she and I went to an architectural salvage place and we were rummaging around in the basement. I was looking for some old windows uh, for the woodshed and uh, she found some amazing tile. I mean these are old tiles that uh, came from out of some wonderful home no doubt. Uh, but they fit perfectly around our fireplace surround and they're also the color that she wanted for the decor that she has for that room. We got a whole box full for about 40 bucks. <laughs> Love it. I cut out the profile of the surround, if you will, on the bottom of the hearth of the fireplace. Uh, I think it's going to look pretty amazing. 
I think it's going to look old. And um, I think people are going to think that, you know, it was always there. Well, there's nothing like enjoying the ambience and warmth of our amazing fireplace. Our Christmas decorations, we have 2,000 lights on our 70 plus year old rhododendron and uh, we absolutely love it. A good reason to drink some wine and, and uh, bring in the first snowfall of our season. Okay folks, what I'm going to do is take this one piece, slide it in the back of my, my car here, get it out of the way, so I can then do that cross cut. There we go. Now, I'm going to move this over. <laughs> my wife not only is a great interior decorator, but she's also over the years have become known as a colorist. Well, what's a colorist? A colorist is somebody who has the ability to choose just the right color for a certain room or a certain house and so on and so forth. Well, she's done it again with this beauty. Well, another fun day at the Kirchers, as you can see, uh, taking the old sugar maple tree down. Lots of fun. Well, there goes the first branch. Happy to see it go because it really was a danger uh, to our neighbors and automobiles and so on and so forth. We have Stephen's flooring back. Uh, previously, they ripped up three layers of linoleum, old linoleum, from our kitchen, our laundry room, and our small bathroom off the kitchen and uh, exposed basically the subflooring. And we've been kind of dealing with that for a couple of weeks. It took that long to have this flooring arrive with a special order, and it does look fantastic, I must tell you. You know, when you work on old houses, it's amazing what you find. Here's an example. They needed to fill a hole, so they took a paper bag, they scotch taped it to the wall to cover the hole, and then they painted it. <laughs> you gotta love it. You gotta love it. Well, our little bathroom, the smallest bathroom in the world, is finally completed. And take a look at this. And I love Barbara's Choice of Colors. It's absolutely fantastic. Pond number two is safely in our neighbor's driveway, uh, and he's now maneuvering a Podzilla uh, back to this flatbed here. Uh, and you can see him coming down the road right now. And then uh, number three, which is a smaller pod, it's about half the size, it's an eight footer, will be the next one, and that'll be delivered into our driveway. And thankfully, all of our pods from Florida are going to be here in Forest Lawn. Uh, they're going to pull the door just to give them a little more room to get the water heater up. So they just uh, pop the pins uh, from the hinges. Aha! It was on. Wow. I'm progressing in terms of actually tearing down these old cupboards which we're going to rebuild so Barbara has more space in them. The cost of lumber these days, it doesn't make any sense to not save all this stuff. So I am going to repurpose and restore all the wood that you see here. I'm saving all the pieces and we are going to conserve, restore, and renovate. <laughs> uh, this is the dryer and it's a gas dryer by the way, but it still requires a plug. And alongside that is the washer, and that also requires the plug. Well, behind this, they uh, put a shelf. And for what reason, I don't know, because you had 
all these cupboards above it that could hold uh, whatever soap and detergents and so on and so forth. But nevertheless, they have a shelf there. But this is another one of those you got to love it. So what they did is they put the shelf directly over the plug and then they notch it out so the plug for the washer could be plugged in. If you come down the line, same situation where they notched out, in this case they did a triangle so the plug could be squeezed through. So these are the things that I think are just so hysterical uh, and I just love them because it's part of the weekend warrior, it's part of the, uh, the dealing with old cottages because you never know what you're going to find and some of these are just very amusing. Electricians were able to change out that old 60 amp and replace it with this wonderful new 200 amp service. As you know, Barb and I love working on our 1905 cottage. And the one thing that stands out, I think more than anything, and what we try to accomplish on an ongoing basis, is that real custom finish look. We just love it. For example, what Barbara did in the kitchen, uh, the cabinetry is just superb. And behind me, you'll see that we have new cabinetry that we fitted around the stack of a washer and dryer and also the little refrigerator. And so it looks like it was just it grew out of that space. And that, that, that's really what we're looking for. This is why it's on wheels. You can see what I'm gonna be doing here. I'm pushing it back into this little section and it's just, it's gonna slide in. And that bump out fits perfectly with the other piece of cabinetry that we have here. And just as I said, kisses this cabinetry. So we have about a three and a half, four inch bump out. And we think that it just adds that much more interest to the overall configuration of cabinetry. So that was a straight plane. We bump it out. And now we have another interesting element that the eye can kind of spend some time with. <laughs> It's the next morning and I finally have this completed. And the important thing is that Barbara loves it. And if Barbara loves it, I love it. <laughs> of course, we're just kidding. But we both love the whole idea of the custom look, if you will, that real finished look. That's what we were striving for. And I believe we accomplished it. As you can see, it's raining. Um, it wasn't supposed to be raining, but it is behind me is uh, a bit of a disaster. I've got my 4x8 tempered boards which I'm using to line the inside of the shed with and they don't like rain folks. 24 inch cut here and I need to cut uh, about 62 inches here. I gotta quickly cut a couple more pieces and then put some plastic on top of it and, uh, and then work on the inside and uh, call it a day for the outside cutting. Okay, folks, well, uh, we started, as I said earlier, at 7 o'clock, and we went through uh, 32 bags, right, 80-pound concrete, and it's now 4 o'clock, so it took that long for us to do this. Now we just have to wait about 3, 4, or 5 days, whatever it's going to take for it to cure, and uh, when it turns white, then we can take out uh, the 2x4s and then do the final grading run. Today we're embarking on a fairly monumental project. We're going to give ourselves a new entrance on the side of the house. The side of the house is actually the front of the house in this particular case because that's the only entrance into our house except for a back door by the patio. But we decided to take that small little overhang off and extend it out with some nice 6x6 six six posts and some railings and it's going to look very very cool and we're doing it so it also embraces if you will the character of our 1905 cottage we're advancing very nicely on our project and this is our portico uh, that we're putting against the house to give us a whole new entrance and a really wonderful look now what we have done so far is we have all the superstructure done what i mean by that is we've got all the two by fours the rafters up 
two by fours for the step, which is a very comfortable five and a half inch step. And uh, so all that's going to go together today. And we're going to wrap all these posts with PVC from the rafter tails and also from the fascia board. As you can see, we've been able to put in the grids all the way around the portico and the wonderful trellis on this side. And now we're about to embark on the sidewalk. As they say, the best laid plans of mice and men. We started off with uh, 17 bags of 80 pound concrete. And we managed to get only that little portion done. So why is that? How did that happen? <laughs> well, it's simple. It's called miscalculation. So Barbara and I are going to be heading up to the big box tomorrow morning. We're going to rent one of their pickup trucks and we're going to come back with another 25 bags of 80 pound concrete and we're going to be able to finish the job. Well, it's uh, seasonably warm today. It got to be 82 or 83 degrees and uh, you can see the kids are already playing in the park and uh, everybody's enjoying today because uh, it's springtime. However, you're talking about upstate New York and tomorrow it's going back down into the 60s and it's probably going to stay there for another week or so. I'm taking advantage of the weather right now and I'm seeding my lawn or seeding my ground I should say uh, because it's been nothing but dirt for a long, long time because it's been under construction for a long, long time. I'm going to put down a mixture of about 70% rye and the rest of it is fescue. And the reason I'm doing it is because rye germinates very quickly and I want instant satisfaction. So hopefully, not by tomorrow, but probably in 7 to 10 days, I'm going to have a green lawn. Ladies and gentlemen, I have found another treasure trove, Medina pavers. Well, this morning I started to unearth these. Now, here's the good news. They're beautiful and they're, I think there's going to be a lot of them. The bad news is I don't see any indication that they actually run underneath our asphalt driveway. I think at one time they did and I think they dug them up and probably threw them away and put the asphalt down, which is a major shame. But lucky me, we still have these. My wife Barbara and I met our son Seth and uh, daughter-in-law MJ at uh, two of her favorite Amish nurseries. One had phenomenal, as you can see here, hanging baskets. I mean, phenomenal. And then over in this corner, we have a ton of hostas and other plants that do well in the shade. And what we're doing is creating a meandering pathway that's going to be coming from the patio and working its way up to about where I am right now. Believe it or not, but I've been out here since 3.30 this morning with the floodlights on. I know I'm crazy. My wife tells me I'm crazy all the time. But you know what? I got so excited about this project, I wanted to just dive right into it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the look back at our first year anniversary. Coming up next week, I'll be planting beautiful flare hydrangeas in the Neewall Garden that Barbara and I found at a local nursery, along with daisies and other plants given to us by a generous neighbor. Then plumber Scott Guilfoyle and marvelous Marvin will be installing a long needed second hose outlet. And family friend Herb Prodrick will be installing a gorgeous rain chain he handcrafted near our portico. It's all coming your way, so don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. And as always, folks, it is most appreciated. Thank you so much.